Three, two, one. What is happening, Facebook? We are here again at the Your Sustainable Future Podcast, behind the scenes, getting ready to shoot another kick-ass episode of our podcast. Getting ready to launch here. Can't wait for you guys to check it out. We got a lot of good things happening over here and a lot of good information for you so that you get educated, you watch this, you learn, you get a little bit more excitement about what uh, it is that, number one, we do, but also what's going on around you, what's going on in the industries and all these different things that are happening uh, with this you know, PACE program and all these things. So today we're talking about is the PACE program getting in the way of a home refinance? So we're going to stay live for a little bit, let you guys check us out and get a little information. I'm going to pass the Pass the mic over here to my man, Mr. JB. JB, you're on live. There you go. Okay. So, everybody here on the podcast, we uh, we welcome you. We are here welcome for... Back. Go ahead and launch us off. Yeah, we're here coming at you every week uh, with a new different piece of education mm-hmm. to help bring you up to speed. We get a lot of questions and we have a lot of concerns out there. We're part of networking groups and we meet with homeowners all the time and they're always asking us about... You know this, that, or the other thing. So we figured, why not just bring it to them, bring it to the table, make just it a, bring them, yeah. bring them the info, bring the info for like, free, all to you guys once a week. You're going to validated with links, informational studies, mm-hmm. everything that we're going to talk about today. You're going to be able to validate on your own, on your own research. We want to make sure you're informed. the The general topic here is: is pace getting in the way of a home refinance? That's what we're talking about. Pace leans. Or property assessed, what? Clean energy, Clean energy, yep. Property assessed clean energy. We obviously are in the clean energy space, the energy efficiency space. This program launched in California as far back as 2001, as a matter of fact, which was actually news to me. I thought I was pretty damn educated, and all of a sudden I got got schooled on when it actually (laughs) came out. So, But uh, you know, as well as I do, the state of California has all kinds of regulations, and in that particular time frame... Where we just got out of the dot com bust mm-hmm. and the burst of the bubble of the dot com, the the real estate mortgage industry was at a kind of a little standstill. A lot of people were a little nervous about what the heck was going to happen. I was still in high school, so I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Shows my age. That's yep. awesome. No, but then uh, we then we get up into two thousand two, two thousand three, and then whammo! Here comes the real estate wave, baby. Yep. Right. And uh, we wrote it. I wrote it actually personally very well. Surfed it, as a matter of fact. So it was pretty awesome. Mm-hmm. But, you know, nobody knew anything about Pace back then, right? Nobody. Oh, I didn't hear about it. Nobody in the lending world, the real estate world, really talked about it, knew about it. It wasn't even really available. It was right? still in the incubator stage. Yeah, just right. kind of growing and festering. But then the bubble popped. Boom. Which gave it a setback. <laughs> Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, all those were just lenders were like, nope. We Not don't want happening. anything to do with it. Just straight brought the hammer down. Not yeah. happening, right? So, so what they, do we do, right? What do we do? They did their due diligence. Uh, they worked really hard, and they they worked with these companies to finally get approved and finally launch. And mm-hmm. so this fast forwards my little story. I did ten years in the United States Marine Corps. I was getting out August of 2012. This program, actually, Hero, was the first one that launched in Southern California, and it launched in uh, September of 2012. So I had a pretty good transition when it was really hard to find a job in our economy. I must have applied at 10, 15 places, had like five or six interviews. Yep. And nothing really worked out until I found this, and I fell in love with it because I was an instructor in the military. I was teaching a lot of new Marines coming through about PT, helicopter, mechanics, and all that stuff. And this was, I looked at it the same way. I had a chance to sit with the homeowners and educate them on their home improvements. So it was pretty cool. Yeah, it was an easy transition for you because you got educated first. And I think that was the biggest deal. Like Once we learned the PACE program, Assembly Bill 811 passed in the state of California as Schwarzenegger left office. And what that allowed PACE to do was lend in a tax lien position. And we're going to get into the definition of that, what that means for for the general public. So we're going to speak layman's terms today. We're not going to give you a bunch of fancy names and numbers. We're going to talk to you real so you understand what's going on around you, what you're capable of getting when it comes to, you know, this type of loan or this type of lien that might be, you know, in the way or not in the way, (laughs) as a matter of fact, with the way we're going to tell you. So, you know, when it came launched and it came through, the HERO program was one of the PACE lenders. Now, HERO stands for Home Energy Renovation Opportunity, mm-hmm. one of the great programs within the, within the PACE umbrella. PACE stands for Property Assess Clean Energy, statewide program, and now, in some, some cases, a nationwide program. Not open in all 50 states just yet, but it's, uh, it's growing rapidly, which is pretty exciting for us 
in our expansion particularly. Yeah, and I, I read a little article today that said uh, there is 30 states that have a similar program. It's not Hero itself or Pace itself, but a similar program. They basically piggybacked off the idea of this and started recreating the idea in some 30 different states around around the country. So that's yeah. pretty cool. That's going to be some serious growth. So we got some expansion opportunities coming up with us. But with this podcast, this particular information, we're talking about pace. We're talking about just California for right now. Mm -hmm. Right? Because that's where we are. That's where we're located. Sunny Southern California. We're sitting in our studio here. And it's just a I mean, gorgeous day outside. As you can see, the natural light coming through the windows. Mm -hmm. But ultimately, we're looking at pace is allowing us to use this financing program of theirs, mm -hmm. whatever lender it might be, it might be California First, might be the Triple E funding, it might be Hero, Y Green, Y Green, and it kind of depends on where you're located, what county you're in. Um, all of them are good; they're all different. They have different criteria. Uh, they lend on basically, excuse me, they lend on basically the same criteria, but right. sometimes different counties, different municipalities have yeah. approved each of them, depending so on the area. So on and so forth. One's more right. prevalent than the other. Exactly. So one of the things I wanted to touch base on is like what type of home improvement qualifies for yeah, these programs, absolutely. right? Absolutely. Well, first off, they have to be permanently attached to the house. And yep. for, for that matter, the house has to be permanently attached to the foundation. So you can't have any trailers that you can just hook, hook up to a truck and drive away with, right? Yeah, so no mobile homes. You can't no. put windows on the mobile home and then drive off. Yeah, <laughs> it's got to be recorded. <laughs> Nothing against the mobile home, but you got to have a permanent foundation. So that's one of the rules, it's right? It's got to be conveyed with the city as a permanent foundation. Yeah. So yeah, the improvement must be stalled uh, on site. Yep. Right. So, and it has to be solving a problem like electricity, gas, water, or just like overall comfort in the house. Uh, it basically Some type of efficiency. Energy efficiency. Yep. Yeah. Yep. That's going to reduce our overall footprint. You right. know, the cool thing is too, that what the financing can be done up to a hundred percent of the project cost. Yeah. So whatever your project you're doing might be heating and air, might be solar, might be roofing, artificial turf, artificial turf uh, something that's going to save somebody money on their water or electric bill. Mm -hmm. significant money in most cases if your contractor knows what they're doing now the second thing is that that's what we're that's what we're talking about that efficiency financing a lot of people say well i don't have that money i don't have that 10 percent down mm -hmm. the 40 percent you know site evaluation the 40 percent progress payment and then the 10 percent down that's yeah. the traditional contracting world of lending right yeah so when it comes to like cash deals that's how you got to pay it you got to pay it with in these increments right and they have to have the cold hard cash and coming out of that bubble that we talked about in that time in 2012, 13, 14, more specifically, a lot of people just didn't have it. They didn't have the credit scores to get it otherwise. And a lot of people were sitting on equity mm -hmm. and they could not do nothing with their equity. So this program came out and I mean, it literally just opened up a world of opportunity for a lot of good people, not necessarily people that had bad credit because... A lot of people had that misconception at first mm -hmm. that, oh, this is a, a hard money loan or some bad credit lending. Mm -mm. Oh, crap. This is actually a savvy lending opportunity for good credit, bad credit, and indifferent credit. Now, there's criteria. We're going to get into what the criteria is. Yeah. But ultimately, it has nothing to do with your credit. So, But it does have everything to do with your equity and your particular property. And the property Tony value. Tony talked about the property value. You have to have equity in the property, at least 10%. For all the pace lenders, yep, they want to lend on equity because they're taking a tax lien position right. on the equity. It's right? their security for loaning you the money without doing a credit check. Absolutely. Absolutely. So with that being said, it's not based on income or credit, mm -hmm. right? You got to be current on your mortgage though. So they will run a check to make sure that you've been current on it for the last 12 months. Just to validate their payment history yeah. is valid, right? Now, a lot of people think, well, I was, I was 10 days late last month. Doesn't matter. If it's not 30 days late, it's not reported. They won't know. That's between you and the That's bank. Right. So don't That's worry. Right. 10, 16, 17 days late, no big deal. As long as it's not more than 30. Yeah. If you're not over 30 days late, you're not late in the credit world, right? Correct. So in the credit bureau, in the credit world, you're not late. You know, so that's a good thing. And then the other thing they check for on that credit report is, is your, or they run a title report and they find out if there's any tax lates, tax, property tax lates, right? Absolutely. So if there's none, then again, you're going to, you're going to be qualified. And then finally, uh, the last thing that they're really looking for is bankruptcy. So a couple things about bankruptcies. In most cities and most counties, your bankruptcy, as long as it was discharged, you got to look for that one word, discharged, yep. more than two years ago. Now, the city of San Diego and Chula Vista, they both want the full seven, just like everybody else. Right. But this is uh, this means where the rest of the counties is just discharged two years. Now, here's one more thing I, I'd like to alert people of. We say there's no credit checks, meaning 
If you're late on your car payment or you're late on your Macy's card, for the most part, they're not going to catch that when you're qualifying for a loan through the PACE program. Mm -hmm. However, if you've had a bankruptcy that has been discharged more than two years, you Good can get point. approved. Good point. But then they're going to look at those other little things, the, the Macy's card, the car payment, that gas card that you forgot to pay, whatever the case may be. Then after the discharge. After the discharge. Because they're looking for, in the, in the world of credit, they're looking for that reestablished credit history, mm -hmm. valuable and reestablished payment history. So their credit, they're, they're qualifying you now versus just your hop, just your property if you have a BK. If you have a BK. If you don't have a BK, then you're not even, not even this is not even stuff. relevant to you. Yeah. All you got to do is worry about if your mortgage is current, your tax payments are current. So that's the good thing. You know, uh, and then what type of, you know, they also ask a, not only just the qualifying criteria, we've talked about those four criteria. Yep. They talk about what products, right, should mm -hmm. be, should we select or what products are, are able to be considered, right? Well, obviously, it's, it's completely up to the homeowner. However, if you have a good energy specialist, what they're going to do is they're going to actually come into the home and they're going to walk around the home with you and assess it. And they're going to give yeah. you their best recommendations. So, for instance, I might come in and say, okay, these are dual pane windows, but they're very old. And they don't look like they're filled with argon gas. They don't look like they're energy star rated. You could feel heat coming off of them. So, I might recommend to do that first. Or maybe... Maybe like you just did the other day, you recommended the guy do cool wall because he was going to paint the house and restucco some areas anyways. He might as well do cool wall on the outside because how much could that lower? Yeah, so exterior coating, right? So you're doing an exterior coating. It reduces the electrical, uh, the electricity bill by UV, you know, reflection, mm -hmm. meaning you're not, a, the walls aren't just absorbing heat all day. They're actually reflecting heat. You know, most of us know that if you live in a stucco home and it's not, has an exterior coating like a cool wall or life paint, one of those products that are great, mm -hmm. lifetime warrantied and all that. If, if it's not those products, you're talking, you're talking, you're living in an oven and the sunlight cooks our walls. I mean, test my, test my theory here. Hot day, go out, touch the wall, touch the wall that the sun's hitting. Is it hot or is it cool? And once you do that, you'll know that that heat is transferring most of the time right into your home. Unless your home's really well insulated, which is obviously Correct. a very important thing to do. Another huge energy saver. Mm -hmm. And actually not the sexiest product, right? It's just insulation. However, can't, can't even tell it's there. Is it not the, the it biggest? Feels. It's probably the biggest bang for your buck. Yeah, I would but, say. I always recommend that. If they don't have it, they need to do that first and foremost. Because yeah. that's where a lot of stuff's gonna escape. The second thing is the windows. Then we can start looking into HVACs, and then finally, you know, the last thing you're probably going to want to do is throw a solar panel system on, yep. but now you're not going to need such a big one. We talked about that in one of our last podcasts, Absolutely. so go check that out. You can you can get some more information on products. Yeah, so we're not going to get too much into the products of stuff right now. We're going to talk more about how this PACE refinancing and, and refinancing with PACE, the recent laws that have changed, the recent regulations that have changed, and the type of liens, loans, liens, that it is on one's title mm -hmm. on a on a property tax bill. Okay, so everybody in the, in California, anybody in the you know in the United States for that matter, if you own a home, you have a property tax Correct. bill. What that bill is all dependent on value, on your county, on your assessable rate. All those different things are, are part of a, a part of the criteria. But ultimately, we're talking today about does pace get in the way of oh. a home refinance? Well, that has to do because the lenders in the world, the real estate world, they're all looking at PACE as a line item or a lien that could be in the way of their new purchase loan or a refinance loan. Now, when it's all first started, right, they had a lot of reason to be upset. Of course. The lending industry, the real estate. We've never seen anything like never it. Never seen anything like it. It was new, Okay. And my experience goes very vast into the real estate and mortgage world. And I know I love all my friends and loan, loan officers and lenders and brokers all out there. <laughs> you're probably some of you are hearing this right now yep. and you're smiling because you know, I've told you this, but we know that you don't want anything else challenging your already difficult enough file to get your particular buyer or your seller. borrower or seller approved. Right. Mm -hmm. And so anytime there's all of a sudden this pace lean, a hurdle that you have to get over, <laughs> we got to jump, we got to, we got to move and dodge and, and, and turn a little bit. All of a sudden it was, oh, let's just move on to another property. Yeah. Right. So no more of that garbage. Okay. Yep. Homeowner wants to buy that home and, or once your homeowner that has, you've sold now wants to refinance six, eight months, a year down the road. Now they've done a home upgrade with, with us or somebody else. And they've used that PACE program, and now they have a PACE lien. 
mm -hmm. on their property. What happens? Well, there's a couple ways to get around this. Now, let me, uh, you might want to explain this too, is uh, the difference in loans. Because you got something called a superior loan. Yes. Or, or lien, I should say. Yep. Superior lien. So that's something that's going to take first position. Meaning, if anything were to go wrong and the person were to foreclose on the house, they get paid first. Superior lien. Yep. Superior lien. Then you got something called a junior lien. So let's say you buy a house, you wait for a couple years, then there's some equity. So you go out and you refinance the house and you pull out a second mortgage based off of that equity. That's going to call it a junior lien. Yeah, it's a still, home equity line of credit is also known yeah. as a junior lien or a secondary lien, right? So exactly. it takes second position. Second position just simply means like this. Like Tony said, if it is foreclosing or there's a problem in payment history with your first or your second lender, they have the right to start the foreclosure process. What that simply means is they get paid in order. Mm -hmm. In order means first lien to get paid, primary it's just or like, superior lien. It's like standing in line. Standing in line. Now, superior liens, this is why we bring this up, PACE becomes a superior lien, meaning taking first lien position in front of your traditional first mortgage lender. Which freaks them Which out Which freaks first. them out <laughs> at first, exactly. <laughs> at first. But. but then, obviously, once understood and once educated, and especially if you get onto the, our links, get onto our site, get onto our podcast, and find these links of this valid information that we're giving you right now, verbally, we're giving you our spin, our take on it, right? Are we, are, we, are we claiming to be experts? Well, yeah, we're pretty damn good at it, okay? <laughs> However, we're not experts. We're not, writing, we're not writing notes for the VA. We're not writing notes for FHA or Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac. We're not writing notes for lending institutions like RESPA or real estate you know, services across the nation. No, we're not. But we are a valid expert in the field of home energy efficiency that are superior in using this particular PACE program. Yep. And so we're, that's where this information is we'll, coming from, guys. We'll include some of those links in the show notes. If, if you're listening to this on podcast, it'll yep. be in those show notes. If you're listening to this on YouTube, it'll be down there in the notes as well. So you can come in there, check it out, click the links, and go look up this information for yourself. And we always suggest you do that. But what this is meant to do is just to bring it to the forefront for anybody that's on the run, trying to listen to this on the way to work, or, yep. or watching a YouTube video real quick. So Yeah, and then you know, a lot of times people go, well, what other types are there of superior liens? Well, yeah, there's, there's a ton. There's a couple. Mm -hmm. So number one, federal and state income tax liens. Big one, that takes superior lien. That means if they lien your property because you didn't pay your income taxes or your state income taxes, guess what? They're in primary superior lien position above and beyond your lender, whoever that may be. I'm not even going to name names, but your primary lender. Okay. Also property tax liens, meaning if you don't pay mm -hmm. your property tax That's bill, a big one. That's <laughs> a big one. They are in first lien position and can foreclose on you out of that position above and beyond your primary lender, your first mortgage lender. You ever heard the, the, the real estate guys out there buying pennies on the dollar, pennies on the homes, pennies on the dollar? Oh, yeah. They're buying tax liens. Tax liens are just that, property tax liens going unpaid, becoming first lien position, and being sold at pennies, meaning you know, maybe it's a $20,000 tax lien on a $500,000 valued home. Well, that's pennies on the dollar considering buying it for $500,000. You're picking up the tax lien and having the opportunity to potentially get that property. Yep. Now, again, we'll go into that another time. We're not doing a whole real estate seminar here. But no, no. ultimately, that's what a property tax lien is. And one more thing. I think we kind of went over this a little quickly, but... When you sell the house, yes. anything in first lien position is something that has to get satisfied first too. So like if you have like a homeowners association, maybe you, you got behind because you're disputing things with them and now all of a sudden you owe 10 grand. If you sell the property, that lien has to be satisfied before the, the loan can go through for the new buyer and you to sell. Yeah, that's so, a superior lien. That's yeah. a, and the last one is, well, two, child support liens. So oh, yeah, that's a big if one. you get behind on your <laughs> child support, if you're in that situation, Again, no judgment passed. Just that's what will take primary lien position, superior lien position to be paid first. Yep. The last but not least comes from our side of the world, <laughs> the mechanics lien. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> so basically meaning that if we do a great job and you decide that you just don't want to pay or can't pay, so we then supply, we supply your home with a mechanics lien. The good news for us in the contracting world, and the contractor state license board allows us to do that being a licensed contractor and valid with the work that we performed as long as we didn't screw something up or not just we any contractor any contractor if they followed the rules if they followed the rules did their job and you just flat didn't pay them guess what they can they can pr proceed with a mechanics lien on your property and then they can start the foreclosure process 
on that mechanics lien. Mm -hmm. Simply put, they're going to get paid not only their mechanics lien, but also interest on that mechanics lien every 12 months until it's satisfied or until they foreclose on your property. So now, just pay this, your contractor, in other words. I okay? know this sounds like a lot of gloom and doom. <laughs> yes, it does, but, doesn't it? But these questions do come up, and sometimes we just need to handle it. Uh, it's really not that bad. So that that's all kind of like the gloom and doom. This is what a lien is. And that's why everybody has this stigma. They're so afraid of liens. They're not necessarily a bad thing. It's just the oh, word. They just hear that word lien and they just freak out. Yeah, okay. because they heard the horror story where somebody didn't pay something and they, their house got foreclosure. Well, dude, you're not going to have that problem because you pay your bills. I know you do. Yeah. So just don't worry about that. Yeah. Now let's get into the financing and PACE itself and how, they, how they're going to work together from this point forward. Yeah. Um, you could probably talk really good on this because he was in a mortgage. He owned a mortgage company for a number of years. So he's very, uh, very astute on like Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac and how they operate. So I'll let yeah. you take that away. Derek. You know, and that's, that's the thing. Uh, there's a lot of different lending agencies out there. Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, they're the biggest. They're the conventional <laughs> loan guidelines. They're the conventional loan superiors. They're the ones that back the conventional loan market. Conventional loans vary in, in dollar amount from, you know, each county you're in, each state, each city, et cetera. But ultimately, Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, those are the mortgage giants, right? You've probably all heard those names before, mm -hmm. I would imagine. Now, how do they work with a PACE loan? Well, in, in most cases, conventional financing with a PACE loan in position still is not available. It's just not available. However, because the PACE loan knows this and they know that it's caused challenges in the lending world, not mm -hmm. so much the purchasing world, but the lending world, meaning you're refinancing after you have a PACE lien, Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, conventional loan limits, uh, you're allowed to do this with PACE if PACE subordinates, which simply means they step back, they allow Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac loans to go take their superior or their first position, They'll and then they re-record, they take a junior lien. So as long as the conventional loans don't have two liens, uh, the PACE program, Hero, California First, any of these PACE loans will take a subordination position. That's yep. That's huge. Huge news for the lending industry. As you know, if you're a lender or understand that game or a real estate agent, you know what I just said is massive. Absolutely. Second way is, is the PACE lien used uh, with FHA, VA, or USDA loans? The answer is yes. Mm -hmm. Beautiful thing, FHA, VA, they let you lend, they let you purchase a little bit higher on the equity side, meaning that they stretch the maximum equity available in the property. FHA, you know, little was 3%, 3.5% down. VA, Zero. no down. You've known that. You've, you've used your VA, bought your home. Yep, I used really my VA, well. bought the home. Not only did I pay zero down, there was a down payment assistance programs that actually gave me an extra five six thousand $6,000. So some of the things that I needed to fix up around the house, I was able to take that money and put into there and kind of pay for some of the moving costs. It was really a great program. Yep. It was a great way to buy. Uh, and, I, and I had the house and for And you deserve years. it. You've served our military how many years? Ah, uh, ten years. Ten, ten years, years in the military, so. and I and thank you for all all who all you out there have served us and are currently serving our United States military. Thank you so much for our freedom, and that is a big com, uh, a big component of of our hearts. Obviously, Tony spending mm -hmm. years four tours, uh, so now yep. you know he knows firsthand <laughs> more than more than you even want to know because I've got the time the chance to learn a little bit about some of the things that went on over there and that's just you know the marine corps birthday is coming up next month marine corps birthday happy birthday marines who wrote and then so. navy, i think today's the navy's birthday so that's okay, 41 well, years how about that how about <laughs> happy birthday navy yep my uh uncle uh recently passed i love him so much recently passed out there he will be buried in annapolis he was a captain in the navy thank you uncle awesome. dave for your 30 <laughs> years of service uh Ooh. in the united states uh, naval academy and the navy so, uh, so yeah, anyhow, the, the just VA, wanted, the VA is pretty good when yeah. it comes to these loans, and it's it's just really awesome what they've done for them. And uh, this is also going to be in the show notes. There's this whole uh, cir circular that they put out that basically depicts the whole laws of uh, using the VA loan and how it's going to work with PACE. Uh, so everything we said, it, they're allowing it to happen. You just got to disclose the documents and make sure that both parties on both sides are aware of what's happening. Yep. And that usually falls on the real estate agent. That's their job. So, And without getting into specifics on each particular lender, I think we scraped enough of the surface to let you know that FHA just approved PACE. This is literally mid-August 2016 nationwide. Mm -hmm. That is a bomb that Jeez. went off in the, in the contracting world that uses PACE 
as one of their primary financers. All of our real estate friends and lenders are like, whew. Oh, yeah. They all like literally took us. They, I, I, I had some people invite me out for drinks to celebrate. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, I mean, it was yeah, literally like buddy. a celebration. I'm getting text messages all day and all. Hey, did you hear about this? Did you hear about FHA and Pace? That was huge news. Huge, huge news. And that was very good for us because for three, four years, trying to trying to yep. help people use the pace and understand it. That was a hurdle when we were just learning how to jump. It was a massive hurdle when we were learning how to jump. We didn't even know how to jump. You're right. Yeah, so, so it's pretty cool. We have a, a buddy that's a lender, and he actually went and sat with the lawyers at one of the financers, a hero there, and they kind of were working out that subordination because he's a lender and he has a, with a big company. So they got together, worked it out. So he was giving us a lot of inside information on that. Well, you know, nothing illegal, of course, but it was very cool to hear firsthand how he had a part in that. Yeah, absolutely. So the mo- the point of this particular podcast, guys, was just education. Education, like we always try to do, we try to inform, we try to be uh, industry specific, we try to help and make sure that you know the little things that are going on around the conversation, the more depth of the conversation mm-hmm. that, that you're going to hear from maybe your, ag- your agent, your broker, your lender, any of these people that are in your world trying to help you. Awesome people trying to do their best to help you live your American dream, your home ownership, whatever that may be, refinance, uh, purchase, all these things that, that will play a role as pace gets bigger and bigger nationwide. Absolutely. And one of the things that we're going to be doing, we kind of talked about is pace getting in the way and we explained it that no, it's, they're all starting to work together, everybody's starting to play nice, but one of the things that we will be doing is we're going to be attending these uh, different functions where real estate agents meet once a week or once a month. And what we're going to do is we're going to put on a presentation to explain to them exactly how PACE works, like the in-depth, like where it came from, its background, how it gets tied to the taxes, and then a lot of the information we covered here, we're going to have a full-blown presentation to just kind of take the edge off so yes. they're not afraid of it. And we'll also have webinars online. So if that's something you're interested in, uh, just stay tuned. I'm sure we're going to send out links um, and go from there pretty much. Yeah. We're going to put all this on our podcast and on, all of our, on our website. You're going to see this live. You're going to see this on Facebook. So, Facebook, thank you very much for tuning in. Yeah. A lot of you guys are tuning in, yeah. liking, loving everything that we're saying. So, good to see you all uh, plug in, plugging in with us today. But number one thing is don't be scared. Get educated. Don't be scared. Is Pace going to ruin my refinance? Is Pace going to ruin my ability to sell? <laughs> is Pace going to scare my agent away? <laughs> you know, none of that. It's no. all it's all becoming a, 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 a mythological creature. Right, it's all a becoming a, a unicorn. Yes, exactly. The chasing of the of the unicorn of information. So we are uh, excited about being able to share this yeah. with you because this was something that I can't tell you how many times I've been asked this. I yeah, mean, over the last, I mean, just a, a, a dozens of times. So, and I know you have too. And uh, yep. I think that today was a good day to bring it to light and to let you guys really see what we're seeing on the on the on the forefront. Being from the contractor space and the educational side of the contracting space. To get into this pace lending and let well, it, let as it a happen. matter of fact, this morning I just sat with a lender and then separately sat with a real estate agent and went over this exact same content. And that's why we kind of sparked off. We wanted to do it today. We're like, well, if they're asking the questions, that means the rest of the world is. Yep. Let's get out there and give it to them. Yep. So with that being said, that's the Your Sustainable Future podcast. Woo! Hope it helped. Do us a favor. Download, the, download and subscribe to our podcast. That's right. Subscribe Please share to our it. YouTube channels and share the stuff. Please share it. Send and it out. Write us a review. Write us a review. Tell us what you think. Yep. Give us your opinion. Good, bad, or indifferent. Ask, Better be ask good. Ask questions. If you ask questions, we can come back and answer them on episodes like these. So yep. let us know. All right. Until next time. Later. See you.